way to welcome Spencer and his family and friends as he comes for baptism. And we'll be um, sharing that shortly in the service. But welcome too to those who are joining online, whether on Zoom or YouTube. It's great that we can worship God together. So as we gather, let's take a moment, leaving behind or turning away from those things which are troubling us and knowing that God knows us and cares for us and wants to help us to worship him today. Thank you, Lord, that you understand the things that are on our minds, the things that we are thinking about for after this service. But help us to leave them with you now, that we might turn our eyes and our focus to you, the one who loves us, the one who calls us to follow. Help us, we pray, to worship you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. The words that you need, you'll find on the screen. And if you can respond, usually in the words in yellow, for the baptism family, it will be the words in red. The response to the first prayer is, and also with you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our Lord Jesus Christ has told us that to enter the kingdom of heaven, we must be born again of water and the Spirit and has given us baptism as the sign and seal of this new birth. Here we are washed by the Holy Spirit and made clean. Here we are clothed with Christ, dying to sin that we might live his risen life. As children of God, we have a new dignity, and God calls us to fullness of life. And in response to the fullness of life that we're given, we're going to stand and worship. And I should say that children and young people will be going out after the baptism to groups and they're very welcome to join in what we've got going on. So please would you stand as we worship.
And we have got something to celebrate, haven't we? The, the love of God in each of our lives, but also we're here today to celebrate the birth of Spencer. So lovely things. <coughs> Thank you. 
Thank you for the grace that you pour out on us, that calls us chosen, adopted, children of the King. Thank you. Amen. Please do take your seats. And if I can ask the baptism past baptism family and godparents to come up here, please.
Thank you, Lord, that we can come because of your grace. Would you open our hearts and minds to hear your word now, that we might understand and receive more of that grace. Amen. Paul's going to bring us our readings. Thank you, Paul. This morning's readings come from Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 to 14 and Matthew chapter 19 verses 13 to 14. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the holy realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ. To be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. And from Matthew. Then people brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked them. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. pray. Lord, I pray that you would take my words and you would speak those that are helpful to us as we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's lovely to have Spencer and your family here with us today. And lovely to have each and every person here today. We are all part of God's family. Each of us matters. Each of us is a valued part, whether we see one another frequently or less frequently. I know today, as we're looking at these readings, we're going to be using our first one as the main one. But we live in a different culture today to the culture that Jesus grew up in where children were important in their family because they're the next generation, but other than that, they were really not important at all. You wouldn't expect your teachers and your rabbis to be bothered with children. And so the disciples think that they're doing the right thing when they're saying, don't bother Jesus with the kids. The important people are the adults. The important people are those who are sick among the religious lot or the ordinary people. Kids don't matter. And Jesus said, absolutely not. You've got that completely wrong. The kingdom of God belongs to them. And so as we welcome Spencer, my encouragement to us is to remember that whatever place where we think we are, whether we think we're important or not, 
whether we think we matter or not, Jesus says, each one of you is vitally important. Those places where we think we're at the bottom of the pile, Jesus says, no. And so I wonder what you as a family, what your hopes are for Spencer. And for the rest of us, what our hopes are for our family members. It might be that we've got hopes for kids, for grandchildren. It might be that we are hoping that our loved ones who are ill have a peaceful and painless death. There can be all sorts of things that we want for our families. We want those things that are good and that are blessing. And we do that by investing in them, by encouraging people, by planning. And so for Spencer, we know that his parents here, Daniel, Danielle and Harrison, they are givens, and he will learn to know them as mom and dad. He will get to know his aunts and uncles, and there are people here that are just part of the family. And Spencer will grow up knowing his inherited family story, which will be growing from both Harrison's experiences and Danielle's. And each of us have a family story that we tell and that we explore and that we know about. Just recently, I was talking to my cousin and he said, Sarah, you're the person who knows what the family story is and he wants to plug in to know more of it because his mum's no longer around. And I know I know bits, but I don't know all of it. And we inherit stories and we are part of stories. And so we come to our passage in Ephesians. And this is what we want Spencer and each one of us to inherit, to live and breathe and understand that this is God's story for us and this is God's story for Spencer and this is God's story for the world. This passage of 11 verses from 3, verses 3 to 14, in the Greek, is one long, complex sentence. And it has got enough convolutions in it in English for us to imagine the complexity as they've tried to work out how to put things there. All of it is in Christ. It's all about who we are in Jesus. 15 times in him in Christ. This is our inherited story. This is what God wants us to get a grip on. The things that we value, this passage comes with God's promises and all that we have in Christ. It matters for Spencer, for each of us, to know the story. And Paul is here demonstrating and explaining that God has blessed us with so much. We're being called to praise God for what we have in Christ. I wonder how often we take things for granted. How often in our homes we take for granted that the electricity will be working, that we can put the kettle on. And yet all of those are things to be grateful for and thankful for. So this is for us to be thankful for. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Every spiritual blessing in Christ. What does that mean for you? That God has blessed you with spiritual blessings not just as a con conglomerate body of Christ, but individually, spiritual blessings for Harrison, for Danielle, for Spencer, for each one of us. God pulls them out because he says, this is part of my goodness for you. 
And the spiritual blessing partly is he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. If people look at you, people look at me, do we, do we want them to see perfection? Would we like them to see all of our mistakes? We know that we all make mistakes, but we'd rather put on a good front. And Jesus comes and God says he sees us holy and blameless in his sight. God isn't blind, but he comes and he looks at us through the lens of Christ and says, each one is in me, therefore I see them as holy and blameless. In love we've been predestined for adoption to sonship through Christ, in accordance with, the ple with his pleasure and will. Each of us, God's desire, his blessing for us, is that we are adopted according to his pleasure and will, that it is God's delight to say, I'm adopting you, I want to adopt you into my family, not as some second best. Okay, I'll give the good, the good blessings to, to, to this lot, to my real sons and daughters, and those others, the ones I'm adopting, I'll, I'll just have a shed down the, down the bottom of the garden for them. No, God says that we're adopted as part of his family to receive the same inheritance as those who are full-born. Spencer is born into family, not adopted. He's loved, he's cherished, he's delighted in. And it's God's pleasure and will that that same delight that parents have for their children, God wants us to know as his cherished, chosen, adopted sons and daughters. And what does that mean for us if we have those freedoms, if we are adopted? If you have adopted children or children, you get, as they grow older, they will have keys to the door. You will expect them to invite their friends over. You'll also expect them to take on chores, to take out the rubbish every so often, maybe to do the dishes or to lay the table. And so, as God's adopted children, there are consequences that we have Freedoms to invite others to know him, to approach God, but also consequences to work out those things that God calls us to do because he says you are part of the plan for salvation. And then the next part we have, that we have redemption, forgiveness of our sins because of Jesus in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavishes on us. Wow. We're lavished with love, with goodness, with forgiveness. If Spencer is like any other baby I know, there will be a number of nappies that have been changed over the months. There will be clothes that have been washed because there have been accidents, because he's a baby, because things happen. And there will be clothes that you have changed for him and that you carry. Our forgiveness of sins that we have is God taking off the rubbish, the messes, the clothes that are dirty and putting on fresh, clean clothes. We're better at hiding our messes than babies are. But still, God says, I know the stains but I love you so much, there are clean clothes. Just come and say sorry, and the clothes are there to be changed into. Grace that Jesus pours out, that God pours out, far more than we can imagine. And do we come to the Father for it? Or do we think, well, he's given me a lot, I can't expect any more. Parents, there is always more that you're ready to give, but you also expect responsibility. Part of the story is that God has so much more for us, and he asks us to be part of, 
of working with him. We were chosen for part for the praise of his glory. Isn't that amazing that God looks and says, you guys, what I'm doing in you is to bring praise to me. That he looks and he sees the changes and says, I'm delighting in what's going on. My glory is coming in you. And as Spencer and as each of us grow in our walk with God, God delights in us. He can see the changes that are happening and he says, that is for the praise of my glory. How many of us have put a deposit on something, whether it's for a car or a house or something like that or a holiday. And you put your deposit down because you intend to fulfill that payment. You don't really want to lose the deposit. And God puts the seal of his spirit onto each one of us. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession. The Spirit is given because God loves us and knows us and has chosen us. Yes, there is always more, always more, always more. But the seal is on us as we choose him, as we say yes. And the call is to walk with him. God is not going to forget the seal that he has put on us. He's not going to forget that he's put a deposit on us. He's going to come and claim us as his own at the end of all time. And so this is our story. This is the faith story that we have. This is the inherited story that we long for for Spencer to grow in, to know. But it's also the story for each one of us, that God is for us, that we are part of his plan, that he chose us before we even knew him, that he lavishes good things on us, and he calls us to respond to him. And so he calls us to praise him to praise him for all that he's done, to praise him for all that he pours out. And as we do, as we become more thankful, we notice more of what God has given and still has for us. Let's pray. Holy One, thank you for all that you have given us for all that is on offer, for all that we have yet to discover. Thank you for all the things that we have because of what Jesus has done. Thank you that you have not stopped working in us. Thank you that you have more for us, more for Spencer and his family. Help us to explore more and to discover more of your goodness and love and life that we might receive it and share it with others as we ask in Jesus name. Amen. So we're going to stand and worship again. We are acknowledging our God and our King and his amazing love for us. Thank you, Sarah, for your words. We're acknowledging that God is the King of each of us and what he's done for each one of us. Thank you, Lord, for that amazing love, for that amazing grace, for calling us your children for adopting us. What love.
These are Georgina's prayers, but she's got a, a chest infection again, bless her, so I'm uh, leading them for her. Lord, please put your healing hand on Georgina, we pray. Amen. The response this morning is the standard one, so to speak. Lord, if I say, Lord, in your mercy, if you could reply, hear our prayer. Thank you. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we give you praise and thanksgiving for all you do for us, those things seen and unseen. We also give you thanks specifically today for Spencer and ask you to bless him in this morning of his baptism and his family and friends. We pray that he will come to know your son, Jesus Christ, as his saviour and friend and be an example to all around him. 
We pray that his parents, Danielle and Harrison, feel your blessing upon them this morning too. And may it remain in their memory as something precious. Parents are always ready to give more. Our Heavenly Father is always ready to give more too. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we bring our country to you and our newly elected government. We pray that you will guide each member of our government with Christian principles. Lord, we long for more to come to know your Son in, in what, we, what we pray is for revival. Father God, fill your churches with people worshipping and praising you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we live in a troubled world. We have damaged so much that global warming is affecting every nation. Father, we ask and pray that you would forgive us for what we've done. We pray that you will guide those whose aim is to try to change and repair what we have done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for our church. We pray that you will continue to guide Sarah and the ministry team and all the activities that are planned, including the picnic and games on Gildon Park this afternoon. We pray that the newcomers coming into our church feel welcomed and loved. May you continue to bring new people here. We long to see your church so full of worshippers that we have to get more chairs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in the world who've lost loved ones, whether from war or other things. Lord, give peace and comfort where needed. We pray for peace for all nations. It's a big ask, but you are God of all, creator of our world and all of us. And in a moment we will pause so that each one of us can pray in the quiet of our hearts for someone you know who needs prayer. We also pray for those who ask for prayer on the church WhatsApp prayer group. Let us bring our prayers for these folk we love to our Lord and Creator in a moment of quiet. Father, please accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us now join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand for our last song. That prayer. <laughs> I'm just coming back into the room. Who pray? 
Thank you for all that you have done for us. Thank you for the story that we have, the inheritance of the saints. And thank you for the new stories that we will be writing in the pages with you in the coming weeks. Thank you and bless you, holy God. Amen. Please take your seats.
We bring to God our offerings, and Lord, we thank you for these gifts, for all that they represent. Do you take them and use them for the coming of your love in this place? Amen. We have a few notices. This is last part of the service, nearly, nearly the end. Just um, you all, for church family and for others who live here um, in the area, um, do take and see what's on our notices. Um, we've got an evening service tonight at half six that Pamela Yeo will be speaking at. Next um, Sunday evening, Richard is going to be talking about what is God doing in the 21st century. Um, we've got a church barbecue on the 4th of August. If you'd like to come to that, as please sign up at the back. That's going to be in the Vicarage Garden. Um, there's a men's breakfast next Saturday morning. We do quite a lot with food here, don't we? Every so often it feels like everything we're doing is food. Um, and there's a pastoral course. If you'd like to know more, talk to me or to Jane Fincham. And then we have the picnic this afternoon at one. Um, a few, it's a church family picnic. We'd love it if people come along and gather so that we can get to know each other. But we also thought we would do it on Gildon Park because they've asked us to do more things there. And it's a way to sort of, instead of having yet another thing that we all think, well, there are too many and I've got other things to do, but we'll try and combine it. So it will be there at one. If you're able to come and help set up before, um, we'll be down there from about 20 to one to do that. That would be great. There will be some games. Bring your picnic. We're not providing, we're not providing the food, um, but if you bring your picnic and a deck chair, there will be games and things going on too. So that's one at Linear Park on Gildon Park today. I've got some bounds of marriage to publish. I published the bounds of marriage between Ryan Alexander Brett and Louise Ashley Hardy, both single of this parish, and this is for the third time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not marry, you are to declare it now. Good, let's pray. Lord, thank you for Ryan and Louise. We pray for your blessing on them, that they might come to know more of your love and that you would bless their wedding and their marriage. Amen. And I understand that we didn't do birthdays last week. So um, are there any birthdays in July? I know that Natasha's is today. Um, are there other birthdays? July? Karina, I, is it your birthday? On the 1st of July, what's your name? Elaine. Ava, okay. We're doing it, for, we do it for all of July. What's your name? Joseph, okay. I'm sure. Um, Brandon and um, Paul and Ricky, thank you. Others? Tony? Right, okay, I have got other people being pointed out. If you're, if you're being even more shy, we will just say, and the others. So if you'd like to stand up if it's your birthday, we've got Karina, Eva, Joseph, Paul, Ricky, and Tony, and Natasha. Thank you. What's your... Noah. Noah. It might, it's probably easiest if I do the list, and then we'll carry on. And our second verse is, um, God bless you and keep you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to me. Tony, Natasha, and Noah, and Happy anyone else. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. God bless you and keep you. Happy birthday to you. And
And if I forgot anyone on Zoom, I'm sorry. <laughs> right, baptism with family. If you would like to come up, we've got the last thing to give you. Work you set before us today. Take us and use us to bring to others the new life you give us in Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Do stay for teas and coffees and please join us for the picnic. We know it might, you might have a little hiatus but it would be great if you could join us. Thank you. Thank you to the tech team, to worship, to our children.